Hello, welcome to another post from Dr. Blake's Healing Soul. Thank you for watching this on first metatarsal phalangeal joint range of motion. The, the, that's called the big toe joint or, or the ball of your foot uh, or the bunion joint. So the big toe joint I think is the most important joint in the foot. You could argue that the ankle is or another joint is, but but really, we need our big toe joint to propel us forward as soon as the Achilles tendon powerfully lifts the heel off the ground and we're trying to move forward. So we need this big toe joint to function really, really well as we walk. Um, when we measure the big toe joint uh, in terms of its, its ability to move, uh, a normal amount of bend upward, uh, which they, we call dorsiflexion, is typically greater than 80 degrees. Uh, if you have a, limit, a limited range of motion, means that it, a limited range of motion implies that it's going to restrict either walking, running, it could, it could just interfere with wearing high heels. Uh, that's called a hallux limitus. And it, it implies that there's less than 60 degrees of motion. So we need 60 degrees of motion to wear a two inch heel or to, uh, to, um, to do a normal fast walk. Uh, uh, hallux rigidus, which is the worst, and when you talk, start talking about hallux rigidus, people are starting to talk about surgery on a joint. So you don't want to get there, you have to. And, and that's when the dorsiflexion is, le uh, is less than 30 degrees. So what I want to emphasize in, in this conversation is really the place for self-mobilization. I've got a couple of videos and a couple of blog posts on hallux limitus, hallux rigidus, which you can look at all the different treatments for. I've got another video on self-mobilization also, which you can refer to. Um, and that's also on my YouTube channel, which is also called Dr. Blake's Healing Soul. So I want to show uh, on uh, my uh, subject here how to do self, how, first how to measure it, and then how to do self-mobilization for the big toe joint. So first we're going to come over and measure how much the big toe joint moves. Now, the landmark you want to use is the, the toe itself, sort of a straight line along the toe, and then a straight line back, you know, along the first metatarsal. So you take a tractograph or goni goniometer, you bend the toe up, you know, to where it where it just has a nice end point, you know, where, where anyone measuring it uh, could, could get the same degrees. Then you center the, uh, the, the axis of the, of the tractograph uh, on the, 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 toe, the uh, first metatarsal joint itself, and then you line up the, the, the two sides of it. And, and here we're measuring a good uh, 86 degrees. So that's, there's no hallux limitus or hallux rigidus there. So, so it's a, so it's a, it's a very easily uh, uh, reproduced uh, type of examination. So then, let's say we measured a hallux limitus or hallux rigidus. We can start the patient on a self-mobe treatment. Now, now trying to get more motion in the big toe joint, you do not, you know, force it to go where it doesn't want to go. So that always in, it sort of decreases the amount of motion, has the opposite effect. So what you really want to do is do, do it's, it's a, an osteopathic maneuver. You stabilize the metatarsal, you grab the toe, and you're going to move the toe four ways that is not the normal things that happen with the toe. So you're going to do
do a glide to the toe, up and down. So I don't know if you could, if these are very small motions. So up and down, and then you're going to rotate, like what we call clockwise and counterclockwise rotation. And I like to grab the toe from the side and go side to side. And my patients can do this themselves. They, they get very skilled at doing it after 10 times. And then the last one is just to grab the toe and elongate it. So it's up and down, they're very small motions, rotation, side to side, and, and long axis extension, ex extending toe. I'm going to demonstrate this on a model. So here's, a, here's a, uh, one of my patients who uh, I, I didn't get well and de donated their foot. Just kidding. Uh, so I'm stabilizing the, the metatarsal. Here, I'm grabbing the toe. And the first motion is, is a glide. So not dorsi and plantar flexion, which is this motion. These are totally different motions. And so and you really have to stabilize the metatarsal so it doesn't move. So you glide up and down. You rotate clockwise and counterclockwise. You ab and adduct. It's a little, they're really little sliding motions. They don't, don't go more than a couple millimeters, really, in any, any direction. And then you take the joint and you pull it out. Everybody's used to popping their knuckles. So you, it's a pulling out. So it's up and down, rotation, side to side, and long axis extension. Okay, so those are the four motions. You only do it once, maybe twice. You know, some I, I, I tend to do it, I think, twice in average when I do. But no more than that. You don't do it all day long. You just, you just once a day or every other day, you try to mobilize your joint. Takes takes less than a minute to do uh, uh, on each foot. And... Uh, and, and that will really help get the joint moving again. I, I, when people do that, I notice sometimes up to 10 degrees more range of motion gains in the first month when I see them the next time. So thank you, and, and I hope that this discussion on the importance of the big toe joint and what happens if it gets stuck and gets limited, uh, you know, has helped. Thank you.